How many of you know that the yaks we see in the mountain villages are not wild yaks? I believe that at least some of you do. Well, I did not know that when I was doing my bachelor's in science in environmental science. As an environmental student doing my BS in environmental science, I explored the Himalayan landscape of Nepal for its nature and culture over a decade. During a trek to around Annapurna in September 2009, I photographed a whitish gray yak grazing in the alpine meadows far away from the village Kangsar. During that time, I had an understanding that the yaks that graze near the villages are domestic, while the ones that are far away from the villages, they are wild. <laughs> Very funny, right? So I submitted the photograph to a photography contest held on the occasion of World Environment Day 2010 portraying the animal in the photo as a wild yak. Guess what? I won the first prize. Here is the photo. When I recall this moment, I find it a little funny, but more surprised and more shocked, because neither I nor the organizer had any idea that wild yaks are not that easy to find in our country. This is a domestic yak, actually. So somebody has rightly said, little knowledge is very dangerous. Now let me take you to Upper Humla. In 2014 June, we were there for a two months of research on the charismatic Himalayan wolves that was being led by a doctorate student from the University of Oxford named Geraldine Weirhan. We continue to be research collaborators now. On 14th of June, we had our camp around 4,900 meters altitude from sea level. The place was known as Gaukola Valley. So we were in our regular duty of conducting the research. Well into the day's hike, we saw two animals grazing very far away from us. Our local guide said they were wild yaks. We had our binoculars, we looked at the animals. They were yaks, but we were not sure if they were really wild yaks or domestic yaks because they were very far from us. So we kept on heading towards where the animals were. At 12.50, the yaks suddenly appeared again from behind a rock and we managed to take some photographs. This is a photo by my friend Geraldine Verhan. And this triggered a wide media echo across Nepal because we had apparently rediscovered a species that was considered to have gone regionally extinct from Nepal some 60 years ago. This made headlines in the country. Beforehand, in 2013, a group of researchers from an organization named Friends of Nature Nepal, they had also ventured into that area to look for the animal but they did not see a live animal. The only thing they saw were the dong piles and the hoof prints of these animals. And they were the ones who gave us the indication of the presence of these animals in this area. But the International Union for Conservation of Nature, that is the world authority that assesses all the wild animals in the world, they considered our sighting record as uncertain because it was possible that the animals we saw could be feral domestic yaks as well. There was no genetic evidence. They demanded the genetic verification of our sighting, and this added a new responsibility on our soldiers. So for the next three years, I led multiple research expeditions into the Himalayas of Nepal, mostly in Upper Humla, Upper Dolpa, and Upper Mustang, to look for these animals, to ascertain the current distribution. This is the paper we published in 2015 in a scientific journal to inform the scientific community about the rediscovery. So over the years, I said we went on these multiple research expeditions to look for the dong piles as well as hair samples and bone samples of the domestic as well as the suspected wild yaks to provide this missing genetic evidence. So we were able to provide genetic evidence finally in 2021 after eight years. So it took us eight years to show to the world that the wild yaks that we found in Upper Humla were really wild and not domestic yaks. So this has made a way for re-establishing the wild yaks in our country back into the global range map. So this is a huge honor that we see. More interestingly, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, its Asian Wild Cattle Specialist Group, has informed us that they will reassess the species in the quadrennium 2021-2024 and include the animal back to the map of Nepal. And one of the highlights of our journey with the wild yaks in Nepal is the publication of one of the photographs that we took 
during our research expedition in 2015. Of the wild yak that we saw then, it has been included in the new five rupee note of our country. So this was in 2017. Likewise, some students in the mountain districts of Mustang and Taplezung, they read our story about how this happened because this has been, this whole story has been included as a book chapter into a local curriculum that has been developed as a reference material. But not everything is well with the wild yaks. They face a lot of stress, mostly from the livestock hoarders and the domestic yaks that intros on their habitat and displace these animals to remote locations. They are hunted for meat and also for their head, that is called a trophy. The interesting thing is the Tibetan communities, people in Tibet, they have a strange tradition of hanging the head of the wild yak by the entrance of their houses because this animal is the largest animal in the landscape and by putting the head of this animal by the entrance of the houses, they are trying to indicate to the society, look, we are as supreme as this animal. So this is haunted. This poaching is another risk. At the same time, there is a possibility of disease transmission between domestic and wild yak. Also, the road network that is in the Tibetan plateau, that has also intensified the poaching risk. I think you all must have been wondering why I am talking so much about the wild yaks. Why do we need wild yaks? Because we have so many of domestic yaks, right? If you see the numbers, we have more than 14 million domestic yaks across the Himalayas in the Tibetan plateau and many other places. But the wild yaks, there are around 10,000 to 15,000 only. So we need to save this species. And how can we do this? Why do we need first? Because these animals being the largest, they are bulk browsers. So they feed on coarse grasses and make smaller and younger leaves available for the smaller herbivores. So that way they help to promote a better diversity of herbivores in the ecosystem. At the same time, it has been shown by researchers that the places where the density of wild yaks are better, the ground cover of vegetation is also higher. That means it protects the area, the ecosystem from erosion, at the same time buffers against global warming that we talk so much of these days, and at the same time also prevents the fracturing of the alpine tundra that is getting more and more drier. So to do this, to protect the animals, any species, we need a viable population. And to do that, the first and foremost thing is habitat protection. We need to create some habitat refuges for the wild yaks, while at the same time encourage grazing of domestic yaks in other available pastures in a rotational basis, and also maintain sustainable number of domestic yaks. Importantly, we should also produce educational materials, mostly for the local communities, because without that, conservation is not going to happen. We produce some of these fables, books, and some documentary films to do that, but these are never enough. We need more and more of these, preferably in the local Tibetan language. At the same time, law enforcement is very important, mostly from the local authorities, because this area is very remote. Given the remoteness of the area, the local authorities, including the rural municipality as well as the division forest office, they need to come forward in full swing to ascertain that poaching of wild yak is stopped. Over the recent years, there has been a good trend in the sightings of wild yaks. We saw three wild yaks this year. We were there in Upper Humla for a two months research this year as well, and I'm going there again in a few days. So this year we saw three of them, and the world's experts on the species they have indicated that of the three, one is likely to be a female. That is a very, very encouraging sign because this indicates the possibility of the wild yaks breeding in Nepal, and it's a very good conservation message. To me, I feel the journey towards wild yak conservation has just begun. We need to be keeping our spirit very high to protect these magnificent creatures. And whenever I think about conservation or whatever, I always recall a quote by Wall's finest field biologist named George Saller. He is an American scientist who is at his 90s now, and he was there in 2016 to explore Upper Dolpa at the age of 84 or something. So I got a chance to meet him then. In one of his books, he writes, victories are never attained in conservation. If you want to save a species or a habitat, it's a fight forevermore. You can never turn your back. So losing a species like wild yak is losing 
a natural heritage. The wild yaks in our country that are assessed as critically endangered, their future is in the hands of all the people who strive to come forward and walk for the protection of these animals on the ground to ensure that these animals that are found only in few numbers in our country are protected from going truly extinct from our country. Thank you.